still connected to that ex or that person that you're no longer in a relationship with. And can y'all hear me on TikTok? I'm actually on my daughter's. Got my daughter's phone. Can y'all hear me on TikTok? One second. I'm walking in right now. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm all out of way today. I almost d decided not to even get on live because it was so frustrating trying to get YouTube to work at this point, which I think I might not even attempt to worry about um, YouTube. But anyway, back to Soul Ties. The reason I wanted to do this live is because so many people are unaware of the spiritual court they still have connected to people that they used to be in relationships with um last week i was doing a live and soul ties happened to come up on the live and i had absolutely no idea i'm not gonna do to youtube i don't know what happened but they're just gonna have to come to tiktok um last week i was doing a live and during the live um somebody had asked me about soul ties so we just actually started talking about it and i happened to start writing a book about soul ties um for those who, of you who don't know me i'm say bay um i have a women's ministry the purpose of my women's ministry is um for misery pain heartache i help women heal and walk in purpose um I started this ministry. Well, this ministry has always been assigned to me by God. I just, I had the name. I just didn't know what Slave Bible belonged to. But now that I'm walking in purpose, I understand that Slave Bible belongs to God, number one. And it belongs, my misery has become my ministry to women. Um, I've been in uh, 10 years of consequences, 10 years of relationships, repeating the same cycles over and over again. And down the line, God got me free from that. Thank God. I ran from God for years. I didn't want to submit to God. I didn't want to live for God. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And before I looked up and knew it, 10 years had passed me completely by. Um, the last, the third relationship, the third serious relationship that I was in, God literally pulled me out of it and set me free from it. And, um, if it wasn't for that relationship, I would not be sitting in front of you guys today. So, um, thank you for joining the live. Um, those of you who don't know what a soul tie is, um, I'm just going to read little segments of my book and we're going to talk about it. If you found someone who makes you feel so intertwined and connected to them, you may have developed a soul tie. A soul tie is sometimes referred to as an emotional or spiritual cord is an emotional bond to a person. Now, they have many things that you can be bonded to, right? It's many things that you can be soul tied to, but I want to focus on sexual soul ties because that's, that's where the most... That's where the most soul ties occur or through sex. But the other soul ties, you can be soul tied to a person, place, or thing. You can be soul tied to porn. You can be soul tied to drugs. You can be um, soul tied to lots of things. Can you watch the show Our Kind of People on Hulu, please? Okay. But um, anywho, I don't really watch much TV lately. I got a lot of purpose to complete. So um, you can be connected to anything with a soul tie and not know it. Um, I have very, four important relationships in my life to where I was intertwined in soul ties. Number one, you do not have to be married to be in a soul tie. A soul tie can occur with a sneaky link. A, snow, a soul tie can occur with somebody, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you were sleeping with over the years and y'all no longer together, but you don't understand why you can't get them out your head. You, don't, you just don't understand why they can pop in and out your life when they feel like it or you allow them to. This is because you're still spiritually connected to them. And... The reason I did this is because for maybe the t maybe 10 years, I was connected with four different um, soul ties. The enemy, the enemy's only agenda is to kill, steal, and destroy. So it's, he's tricky and his, his plot schemes and plans don't change. So he knows that majority of the time that he can get people with a soul tie. If you're spiritually unaware, you didn't grow up in church, you you know, you don't have a relationship with God, you don't know who God is, you don't you you grew up not surrounded by them, you don't have nobody to warn you in the spirit. I grew up in the church, right? I grew up in the church. I was in church Monday through Saturday. My dad was a deacon Monday through Saturday. And not one time did I hear the preacher talk about soul ties. Not one time did I hear not one time did the church warn me about what soul ties would be or how to um, 
not attach yourself to demonic spirits or what discernment was or the power of the Holy Ghost. A lot of a lot of churches when I was growing up te- taught about prosperity, right? They taught about prosperity gospel, things that make people feel good so they can keep putting their time in the church. No, but nobody warned us about that. Nobody warned me about that. And because, you know, my parents went to the same church, it's only so much that they can teach me as their child, right? Because how, how are they going to teach me something they don't know? So I guess God had to choose me out of the bloodline to figure some stuff out and to break some things generationally and to learn how to get through things like this. So, you know, the people, my kids behind me and then their kids and their kids' kids can be set free and they can know what it is. You know, so... I was in church all my life. I want you to know you can know God and still be in a soul tie. You can know God and still be caught and intertwined. Um, The enemy placed certain relationships in my life over the last 10 years that had a, a, a strategy. The first, I had four serious relationships. The first two relationships were to keep me stuck and stagnant in God and to take my youth away. That was the purpose of the first two those two right so those took my youth away and it kept me in cycles and it kept me in cycles with men because you know if you say i was i was attracted to the zodiac code so all i would here are glasses big well i like them so if you don't like them you can you know log out but anyway if you want to get set free from soul tie you can always stay here so um the enemy's plan for all of those relationships were strategically Set up by him to keep me stagnant, to keep me stuck, to keep me repeating the same cycles. I was a tra- I was in zodiac holes for ten years, right? That's something we do in the south. That's where you go to a dance, French dance trail ride, and you zodiac hole. I'm not saying nothing wrong with it. I just know that that's my kryptonite. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. I have to, I really have to delete this person because at this point, I don't understand the purpose. The enemy is clearly mad, but y'all go get this. So anyway, I stayed in Zodicos for years. Um, I couldn't really get away from the Zodico because I will always meet a guy in the Zodico, which then kept me. How to find out someone has a soul tie with you. Why are you married and concerned? I am married. And I'm concerned because this is what God told me to do. So, you know, if you don't like it, you can stay here and learn about it. But if not, you don't have to stay. So soul ties is when you're sexually intertwined with something. The best example I give of soul ties is to imagine two pieces of paper, right? Two pieces of paper. You're, you're one piece of paper, your, sp- your boyfriend, sneaky link, somebody you hook up with, and one night stand is the other piece. When you put two pieces of paper together and glue them, the glue is considered the, considered the sexual sin, the sin in sex, the bond that you create. Now, sex is good, okay? I just want y'all to know that. Sex is good, but sex was meant for your spouse. Sex was meant for marriage because God understood when he created sex that this was to create a bond between husband and wife only. Why can I speak on this? I just want you to know I have kids outside of marriage, so I've been here. But it took me to go through that to get to where I am now, right? So if you have you have a sex with somebody, even if they're not your spouse, even if it's somebody you're sneaking around with, that's still a soul tie. You ever notice you start having sex with somebody and then y'all so bonded and sometimes you can't you can't go without talking to them, you can't go without being around them. Um, you start picking up some of their characteristics. You know, you may be normal and fine and healed when you meet them, but when you meet that other person, they may, may they may have grew up with a childhood trauma. They may have grew up in a house of anger, so they inherited the spirit of anger. They may have a, a porn addiction. They may have a drug addiction. And then you start sleeping with these people. You start sleeping with them over and over again, right? And then you try to figure out, why am I becoming angry all of a sudden? Why am I becoming, um, why do I have the urgency to want to watch porn? Um, why do I want to argue all the time? Why am I always frustrated? Why am I always stressed? Because when you tie, link your soul with somebody else you are linking their characteristics and whatever spirits they have on them and if you're completely unaware and green in the spirit when you sleep with these people and they don't know god you also attach yourself to everybody they slept with so now you just intertwine in all types of soul ties you just intertwine in all types of soul ties you can't you can't get far you can't get nowhere in life because it's like you're literally stuck in mud. You're literally stuck in mud. You can't go left. You can't go right. You can't go forward. You can't go back. You're stuck and you don't know why. And no matter what you do, you can't you can't get rid of the feeling. Like that's why when you break up, imagine two the two pieces of paper tearing apart. 
that's that's considered the breakup right when the two pieces of paper tear apart are they gonna look the same way they looked before you got together with this person no because some of your soul is going with them and some of their soul is going with you so imagine if you have all these sexual partners that are not your husband and you you just walk somebody's walking around with a piece of you and you walking around with a piece of other people attached to you you wonder why you feel so empty inside you wonder why you can't get it together you wonder why you can't get it straight you wonder why you can't move forward is because you're still connected to all these people they had a part in the bible where uh, jesus had told a woman that you have many husbands some of us have many husbands in the spirit because we slept with plenty of men and never cut the cord. So how many people are you married to in the spirit? When you disconnected with somebody, just because after the breakup you happen to feel better, that don't mean that you're not connected to them still. That don't Just because everything seems fine and dandy doesn't mean that you're no longer connected to them. You have to do the work to sever the cord. So I'm going to give you the steps to sever the cord right quick. Um... Let's see. I'm so sorry. Every, let me tell y'all something. Everything that could have possibly went wrong on this before I got on this live has gone wrong. I'm content. I'm connected to two people. I was connected to several, to several people, and I literally had to go do the work. It's all. Let me tell you something. It's all about knowing the information. Is this information is not hidden? You know, it's all about knowing that, hey, I want to get my life together. You know, I want to I want to walk in purpose in order for me to start for me to start walking in purpose. I had to sever the cord. And so many people are walking around with soul ties connected to people. They no longer with people. They don't even talk to some people connected to people that died still. Good evening, Queen. How are you? I'm doing great. So in order to break that cord, I'm going to the uh, to the part of the book. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's very simple steps. It's not hard to break the cord, but you have to literally go before God humbly, number one. First thing you have to do when you want to break the soul tie with somebody, you want to repent. Like after the breakup, after the breakup happens and you crying and you upset and you don't know what you go do and you don't know why you did it. The first thing we want to do after the breakup is run to God. Most of us. I ran to God. I was like, God, why you did this? Why you put me through this? Why you let them hurt me? And God sent back like... I, get, I sent you the red flags and you were Stevie Wonder to them. They were, You turned them green. So how could I have helped you? Sometimes God will allow things to hurt you to get you in a position to where you're supposed to be. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to go to God and you're going to repent. You know, God, I understand that, you know, I stayed in this relationship that you didn't want me in. I understand that... You know, this had to be done. I understand that you have purpose for my life. Now that we are broken up, I'm starting to see where I went wrong. I'm starting to see the red flags. But you know, God, you know, I still love them. But I'm coming to you. So here's one of the prayers that I specifically said. Your prayer does not have to be like this. You do not have to say the prayer like me. So can you break a soul tie off your spouse or child without their knowing? Yeah, you can. Especially if it's your, it's your child. You are responsible, spiritually responsible for your child until they're of age to know. Okay, I hear you. Amen. Okay, so my the repentance prayer that I pray with, dear God, you know, you humble servant coming before you to ask you for forgiveness. God, I ask you that you forgive me for ignoring the red flags. I repent for my disobedience. I ask that you forgive me for going against your perfect will for my life. God, I ask that you restore me and heal my broken heart. I give you, I give my life to you again, God. I come to you aware of my sin and ready to repent. Lord, forgive me for I have sinned before you. Wash away my sin, purify me, and help me to turn from this sin. Lead me to walk in the in your way instead, leaving behind my old life and starting a new life in you. God, I love you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your gift of forgiveness. Amen. You don't have to say the prayer I said. This, this was my humble prayer to God. The same way I talk to y'all, y'all can talk to God. It, it, you know, God is not looking for a perfect prayer. God is not looking for... He's looking for a humble heart, a meaningful heart. Hey, God, I don't know what to pray, but can you help me? I'm sorry that I didn't listen. I'm sorry that I let it get to this point to where I lost all these years of my life. You know, I'm sorry that, you know, I kept continuing to entertain this person when I knew they wasn't even for me because that's what my flesh wanted. So I come to you in repentance. And after you repent, you're going to read restoration scriptures. You're gonna you're gonna eat the word eat the word literally. You're going to recite the word daily to yourself because you have at this point your spirit is severed, your soul is severed because you have detached from this person that you were soul tied to. 
you know so some rest, restoration scriptures I have. This is a very popular scripture, Joel 2 and 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army, which I sent among you. So pretty much that scripture is saying, I'm going to restore everything that you lost. I'm going to store, restore everything you lost. And when I tell y'all God will restore all the years you lost. Let me, let me tell y'all something. I thought I lost the last 10 years of my life. Do you hear me? I'm just starting to live. And I don't feel the age of the extra 10 years that I missed. I don't feel nothing because God has restored it. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. To them who are called according to his purpose. Jeremiah 30 and 17. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of my wounds, said the Lord. Now a lot of these times, let me tell y'all something. I read these scriptures crying. I read these scriptures still wanting to be with him. Let me tell y'all something. Just because you say these scriptures don't mean you're going to feel better overnight. Just because, you, just because you go to God in repentance don't mean that you're going to feel better overnight. Okay? It's a process. A breakup is a process. Healing is a process. Severing a soul tie is a process. Okay? I gave y'all a few scriptures on that. Let's see. This is my favorite scripture. This is all over my page. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you future and a hope. That scripture is pretty much saying, I created you and I still have plans for you no matter what you did. No matter who you did it with. No matter how, how you veered off the road of my purpose. I still have a plan for you. No, I didn't plan for you to have them babies out of wedlock, but I still got purpose for you. I didn't plan for you to talk to that many men, but I still got purpose for you. I didn't plan for you to go be on drugs, but I still got plans for you. I didn't plan for you to, you know, to, to, um, you know, have sex with the same sex, but I still have purpose for you. I didn't plan on you getting yourself put in jail, driving drunk and killing somebody, but I still have a plan for you. Passion of Christ. I just watched it other light. Make me think about Mary Magdalene coming to God's foot when people cast on. Hey, I see. I that was a, a, a YouTube video I did when the Israelites took a woman, took a woman in front of Jesus that they had caught. I just want to veer off for a minute for y'all who don't know the story. The Israelites took a woman in front of Jesus. She was caught in the act of adultery, I think, and they wanted Jesus to stone this woman so bad, y'all. So while they doing all of this, Jesus just like writing in the sand, child, writing in the and they took this woman in front of everybody for embarrassment, right? Jesus just writing in the sand. And when the Israelites kept demanding for him to answer them, Jesus got up and said, he who is, out, who, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And everybody walked away. Because who are we to put our mouth on people? Who are we to think that God still can't use people? So I just wanted to uh, throw that in there. So after your, your, your repentance prayer to God, however you want to say it, however you want to talk to him, if you want to journal it, I journaled a lot. That's how a lot of my healing came, came on. Find restoration scriptures. Um, have your silent prayers with God. Have your time with God. This is how you break the connection, all right? Then you got to break the connection. Now you done repent it. You done read restoration scriptures. You done studied it. You done meditated on it. You done did all you're supposed to do, right? Now, you got to break the connection. Okay, you got to throw anything away gifted to you from the other person. This can be jewelry, clothes, electronics, pictures, bears, etc. A car. I don't care if it's a refrigerator. Give it away to somebody or throw it away. I've been with my man for the past six years, although I have passed. We all do. Of course, we all have a past. But in order to break this connection, you have to get rid of everything. I don't care if it's pictures on Facebook, delete them. Thank you so much. Everything they gave you. Rings, jewelry, necklaces, candy, food, everything. Throw it away. Get rid of it. it. What do you need? At this point, what do you need it for? Why do you need it as a reminder? I don't care if it's flowers, a pen, anything. When you want to break the connection from somebody, throw it all away. I didn't want to throw stuff away. I didn't want to throw Apple Watches away. I didn't want to delete pictures. I didn't want to throw clothes away. I didn't want to do none of that. But that was necessary and that was needed. That was needed. $10,000, that's what you had to throw away? Oh, well, God replaces with better. Everything must go. No exceptions, no excuses. If you got to change your number, if you got to change your email, if you got to get one of your friends to hold you accountable to not call that, ne that person, I was about to say Negro, to call that person, that's exactly what you need to do. I had friends that held me accountable. Girl, just just make it to it. Like, I wanted to write. Let me tell y'all something. I want women, we as women, we want to send a long message, right? 
I would type long messages in my notes and say, dear, just so I can get it out. Because women, we have to release it out. We have to release. We can't, you know, we can't hold our feelings in. Like men, they can hold it in. We can't hold it in. We got to get it out. So instead of me texting him, first of all, I blocked him everywhere. I blocked everything because I knew that I had to do this. So I would type these long messages in, text, in the text message mode and send it to my friends pretending it was him so I can get so I can have some sort of release without contacting out contacting without contacting him I changed my email it, it let me tell you something change your phone number okay if you don't have a child with them tell the Lord thank you unfortunately with this last soul tie I had a child but it's still it's still it's still precautions that you can take to get around that okay Okay, so we didn't we didn't set, set our repentance. We didn't read restoration scriptures, and now we throwing everything away. We disconnecting numbers. We disconnecting sales. We not talking to them. We not fooling with them. We not thinking about them. As far as we can start in our mind, they're dead because a breakup is like a funeral anyway. You know, so as far as we can start, they're dead to us. Okay, this is the only way you can break this spiritual chain. Like you have to throw everything away. You have to. You have to. If you're following them on social media, if you're following his friends on social media or vice versa, her friends on social media or family on social media and you don't have no kids. Hey, I had kids when I still deleted everybody. My advice is to delete everybody because you don't need nothing. You don't need to see nothing in your healing process that's going to remind you of them because you already in turmoil. You already thinking about them. You, you know, you in all, and at the same time, you trying to break the soul tie. So you already in a mental state, a mental emotional state to where you don't need to take nothing else. You, The last thing you need to see is him commenting on y'all mutual friends posts. The last thing you need to see is him sharing a picture of him being happy and you over that sad and crying. So delete everybody. Delete everybody. I have come to find that right when I was on the verge of wanting to um, break the cord, I still wanted to be friends and stay in contact with family. Why do we as women or men want to stay in contact with the family? That's their family. You know, they can call you sis and everything else, but at the end of the day, they still on their family side. So I so what I got from that over the years, not for just my relationship, but past friendships I had, is that I never understood why do we try to hold on to family? Why do we try to hold on to talking to the family? That's because we're holding hope. But let me tell you, you gotta cut family off too. No, you don't need to be on the phone with his mama. No, you don't need to be on the phone with her mama. No, you don't need to be talking to the siblings and the brothers. You don't need to be talking to none of them. Because what you talking to them for? What are we still in contact for? Because that's still keeping a connection because you're in contact with the family. You're in contact with the mama because you're keeping some hope alive. You're just dangling around like a little jewel, a little toy for him to play, him or her to play with when they feel like it. No, completely disconnect from everybody. Do you want to heal and break the soul tie? Or do you want to hang around with hope that y'all might get together? Y'all might work out. Like some, a lot of people build a, a whole perception about somebody in their mind. Like we tend to build what's, what's on the topic today, soul ties. A lot of us build a whole perception in our mind about what it could be. When all the red, like at, when the relationship is over, what we hold on to is the is the whole thing. As women, let me just say, as women, we build in our minds that we're gonna get married. Like we meet this man, everything working out. We build a whole life with this man. We don't know if this man our husband. We didn't ask God if this was our husband, but we build a whole life in our head with this person. Oh, we go get married. This is where we go live. This is where we go drive. This is how many kids we go have. Da 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 da. And it don't. And we didn't create a whole imaginary perception of what it could be with this person and we even ask god for permission and then when it get dismantled we're not we're hurt but we're more hurt over the perception that we we built it of this person in our mind which not which is not true see the idol mind that's the enemy playground your mind is the enemy's playground so just while you sitting there building and the enemy put more thoughts in here, oh yeah, y'all can live here and y'all can do this and and it don't even be that. It don't even be that serious. But we be setting ourselves up for failure. This is your time to be selfish. This is your time to work on you. If you gotta seek therapy, do it. I would advise anybody to get therapy. If you gotta get a therapist, get it. 
If you gotta seek Christian counsel at church, get it. If you don't have, if you're not surrounded by good friends like me, or you're not surrounded with praying people, find you some praying friends. Get in a prayer, prayer, prayer group. Get in a Christian group. It can happen. Repentance, right? We didn't repent it. We didn't read our restoration scriptures. We didn't threw everything away. We didn't cut all contact with them and everybody that surrounds them. Any mutual, any mutual friends? We're not going to no mutual friends parties to look for them. We staying away, you know. And if the and if you decide to keep the mutual friends, you need to draw a line, put a, put ten toes down, and let them understand. Hey, we're going through a breakup. I don't want you to mention them. I don't want you to talk about them. I don't want you to ask me about them. Now, if I want to vent to you, that's fine. But other than that, please don't put me in a position to where I'm hurt all over again. Okay, then the next step you're going to do is forgiveness, okay? This, this, this step was hard, for, hard as hell for me, okay? It's going to be hard as hell for you because not only, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so God, so they didn't hurt me, even though I know you allowed them to hurt me. But now I got to forgive them as if I did something to them. You want me to forgive them? And in the Bible, the Bible says you have to forgive your brother 70 times, seven times. Every time somebody sin against you or hurt you or hurt your feelings or make you feel some type of way, you got to forgive them. And I know that sucks. How did you co-parent with that soul tie? We're going to get to that in a minute. Well, no, let's get to it now. I'm co-parenting now with that soul tie. And it's not hard to co-parent with a narcissist. It's not hard. Uh, it, no, it's hard to co-parent with a narcissist because um, you learn that you fight against principalities like you're not i'm not fighting against his flesh and blood I'm, I'm fighting against the principalities and the spirits that he allows to use him when it comes to me and let me tell y'all something this last breakup put me on the road to purpose and i have been through hell do you hear me even when i was hurt let me tell y'all something i'm just be honest with y'all i was cussed out every time i talked to him i cussed he cussed me out God wouldn't even let me say nothing, but that boy would cuss me out. He would drag me. He would call me out my name. He would make me feel 10 times worse. Now, we already not together. I'm trying to heal. I mean, he dragging my names in the streets, saying that I'm bitter, saying that I'm this. Like, I really, God literally put me in a position to where I had to keep my mouth shut. That's how I know. You get to, let me tell you something, when you graduate to a level of maturity in the kingdom, in the kingdom, because Ultraman wanted to pop off. Ultraman wanted to go to jail. Ultraman was about, I was about that life. Because you're not going to talk to me crazy. You know, but when I realized that God had to strategically show me how to deal with him. And to understand no matter what he taught, he tells me. Or the attitude that he has with me. You still got to put on a, a smile on your face. You doing this for your daughter. You're not doing this for him. You're doing this for your daughter. You know, it's it's a certain control. It's something about the whole having the Holy Ghost that will shut your mouth. Do you hear me? It's so many times I wanted to clap back, and it's like I couldn't even open my mouth. I could, I tried so hard, and I couldn't even open my mouth to clap back at him. Because at the end of the day, when you realize that people's responses and hatefulness and ugliness has everything to do with what they feel about themselves and what's going on in the inside of them, that's when you graduate and understand it's not even about me. Like, I don't know what war you got within yourself. And don't, baby, and don't, don't let it be. Let me tell you something. This is how I worked out. This boy, when we, when we broke up, God showed me everything I needed to see. Because number one, I asked him, I said, God, you know, if you don't think I'm ready to, to for you to show me why this happened, don't show me. God showed me everything. God showed me everything. This boy hated me, was jealous of me. You know, you can be with somebody that's envious of you. Somebody that's literally jealous of you. Do you know you can be you can be in a relationship with somebody like that? I'm not talking about friendship. I'm talking about spouses. You can be with somebody that literally that does not want to see you prosper in anything that you do. That was what I was in. Now, he's still a child of God, number one. You know, I will never discredit him. He's a great father. I'm not going to discredit him. But I'm just telling y'all, y'all, like this. Y'all go watch my faith my faith journey from Louisiana to Georgia. I talk about that relationship. I talk about what I went through and I'm even in a custody battle right now. Don't even know why I'm in a custody battle, but I am because at the end of the day, when you, the, the, the reality is when you break up with a narcissist, their, their sole purpose is to destroy you, is to ruin you and to get people to view you a certain way. But I serve a God, baby. I serve a God, no matter what he, every time, 
Even in a relationship, every time he says something foul to me, something out of line to me, when he would call me broke, I would get $2,000 checks in the mail the next day. I kid y'all not. I'm telling y'all, God used to favor me in his face. And I never understood why, but now I understand why. Let me tell you something. People, let me tell you something. When you okay, I, I'm so confident in, in God, my father, that I don't care what he say about me. I don't care what they saying about me. I don't care how my name being dragged out in the streets because I know it. As long as I know what happened, when you get to a place where you don't have to prove yourself to nobody, or you don't have to prove yourself to nobody, you you at peace. Going through the exact same thing with my daughter's father. Okay, you at peace. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Because what them what them old folks say? Well, don't come out in the water. Go come out in the rents or something like that. What they say? It's going to always be exposed. How did I get there? Lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. Lots of worship. Lots of prayer. Lots of worship. Let me say it again. Lots of prayer. Lots of worship. Lots of scriptures. I'm surrounded with ministers, prophets, pastors that surround me and pray for me and stand in the gap for me. Thank God for that. That's how I got through it. I got through it because three months before we even broke up, 90 days before God started preparing me for the breakup, didn't know why. God said, stop having sex. I'm still in a relationship. God said, stop having sex with him. I said, okay. God said, you're going to start seeking me more. I said, okay. God said, you're going to start, you going to be crying more, but that means you're healing. You're going to start praying more. You're going to start worshiping more. And it seemed like all of my friends, just like certain friends just got in position and they would call me and pray for me. They would send me encouragement stuff. Like, like I would literally, I would feel pain every day, them 90 days. I didn't know why, but I knew that God was preparing me for the breakup. And Y'all, it was a journey. Like, I would be on the floor, face down, worshiping God in the living room, and he would walk right over me. Walk right over me, go good what he got to get, and leave out the house. Because, first of all, the enemy can't stay where the presence of God is. So, I, I see, I'm just putting two, two and two together on a lot of things. Like, God was preparing me before I even decided. You know, before we even got to the point for breakup. So, you know, when you... Let me tell you something. Y'all, I'm going through hell. Y'all need to go watch my live from my faith move from Louisiana to Georgia. I talked about our relationship in that live because it was needed because of what I had to go through. Just getting my daughter, what I had to go, what I'm still going through, you know. But at the end of the day, after all that, you know, God still told me I got to pray for this dude. I have to pray for him. It took me a minute. Like, it took me at least six months of forgiveness. I ain't gonna lie. Some people can get up and forgive overnight and praise God for that. But it took me a minute. It's this forgiveness part right here, this is for the strong. This forget this right here, this stuff right here, it take a minute. Forgiveness takes a minute. Because I had to understand that forgiveness is not for me. For him, it's for me. For if you don't forgive, anger won't let it. Yep. Yeah. If you if you get if you get to a point to where you forgive, it's not for me. Like, if you imagine you staying mad at somebody that ain't even worried about you no more. It's like you angry and you expecting people to get mad. Like, you expecting people to die from the poison you drinking. Anger, anger can create so many things. If, if you don't forgive, it can veer off into anger. If you don't forgive, it can veer off into bitterness root. If you don't forgive... It can veer off into resentment. If you don't forgive, you can stop literally stop your blessings. Like you might as well kiss your blessings goodbye. Because they ain't coming. Because you won't forgive. You're gonna be stuck right where you at until you God be like, Yeah, I love you, my child, but you're gonna stay right there until you forgive. Because you can't even move forward because of the things that has took re- taken root in your heart because you refuse to forgive. When Jesus Christ came back early, he was still forgiveness is a daily task. It's a daily test. I had to get up every day. I will, let me tell you, let me get to it. Forgiveness, number one. The step, I'm going to just read a, a passage from my book. The next step was very hard for me. Everyone is different when it comes to part of uh, this part. I struggle with this part in every relationship. It's time to forgive and renounce. It's time to let go to hurt. It's time to move on from for you, not them. Yes, they hurt you. No, you didn't deserve it. I understand you're angry. I understand your pain. I have been in the same situation before. Unforgiveness only hurts you. Holding on to the hurt and not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting them to die from it. I had to get up daily to forgive. Forgiveness has no time limit. It takes time. I know you want revenge, but the Bible says do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Deuteronomy 32 and 35. Forgiveness is for your freedom from the situation. 
This is the only way you can move forward. If you choose unforgiveness, you're also choosing bitterness, anger, stagnation, pain, anxiety, mind battles, mental battles, and so many other issues that God doesn't want you to deal with. God created us to love one another and forgive. That's 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 page 21 from my ebook I just released. And after you forgive, you know, after you 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 get to that part, you go say a forgiveness prayer. Now, this was my prayer, okay? You don't have to have the same prayer. As long as you go for God, before God humbly, God knows your heart. He understands the word. You may not form the words you need to perform, but it's very simple. God, I come before you asking you to help me forgive the person's name for the for list of things they did to hurt you. God, this is hard for me. I need you to help me release this pain they caused. I understand that forgiveness is not for, for me, not for them, but for me. I understand that if I hold on to bitterness, it can turn into a root of anger, resentment, and so many other things. I also understand now forgiving them will only stop my blessings and the things you have in store for me. I thank you, God, for helping me get through this. It may not happen overnight, but I will wake up every day and forgive this person no matter how long it takes. I want my heart to remain pure. Amen. And after you repent, and after you read restoration scriptures, and after you throw everything they own away and block everybody, and after you forgive, you're going to renounce. Okay? You're going to renounce the core between you and this person. Now, when I say renounce, you're going to go to God and ask him to break the spiritual cord that you formed with this person that was not your spouse. I'm not going to read, read the renounce prayer. You're going to have to get the ebook. The e After that, is you're going to need lots of prayer and worship. Lots of prayer and worship. Promo code, promo code for it. The fact that you ignored, yeah, I ignored the red flag, sure did. Ain't shame to say it. Ain't shame to say it since I ignored all the red flags i was stevie wonder to them flags and i turned them green because that's what i wanted to do yeah the ebook is 9.97 you don't need a promo code it's not it's not even a whole ten dollars yeah it's 9.97 um then after after you do all of this it's gonna be prayer and worship a lot of people don't like to a lot of people want a quick fix some things you got to worship your way out of some something some prayers you got to pray over and over again some <laughs> Let me tell you something. That was my favorite part of the process. Y'all, when I was hurting through all of this, I got, mind you, I got three kids, right? So I was a full-time mom. I was a full-time 911 dispatcher slash supervisor. So I had a full schedule. And on top of that, I had a business to run. So if I find time, found time to get off a 12-hour shift, come home, cook for my kids, do homework with my kids, make sure they straight, make sure they bathe, work on my business, have my Zoom calls, I took a, I, I would come home. I would come home from work, y'all. And I will worship. I will say, okay, I'm just going to play one worship song. Before I knew it, I was in my living room worshiping for an hour. That's the only way to be det uh, detached. Prayer, 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 worship, worship, worship. That's it. I would be in my room, my hands lifted, crying, snotting, and just singing the worship song. But when I was worshiping, I wasn't worried about my problems. I wasn't worried about my hurt. I wasn't worried about my pain. I was worried about giving God glory for what he was doing. Because I had faith that he was going to heal me through my prayer, through my worship, through my obedience, you know, the fact that I wasn't in these disobedient streets no more. I worshiped my way out of that pain. I worshiped my way right on into purpose. So I wouldn't change nothing that happened in that last relationship. I wouldn't, let me y'all, I wouldn't change nothing. You have to have prayer and worship. If you don't know what worship is, worship is to honor or show reference for as a divine being or supernatural power of God. You're worshiping your creator. You're worshiping that per the person that created you. That's what you're doing. You're worshiping him through song. You're worshiping him through getting on your knees to pray. You're worshiping him through lifting your hands. You're worshiping him through any gesture you do to let him know that you love him. That's what worship is. When you're praying, you don't have to have a, 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 a big drawn out prayer. Because a lot of people can say, thus thou, though we come to you, Father, and God don't even hear them. Let's be clear. Their prayers don't touch the ceiling. As long as you go to God with a, humbly before him, because he's your king. He's Abba. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's El Roy. Okay, he's Elohim. This is God. Jehovah Rapha. This is God. As long as you go before him and you, you pray a humble prayer, God, man, I need you to help me. I'm hurting every day. Like, I'm in pain every day. I think about him every day. Like, I would make it to where I would get it down. I'd be like, okay, I'm only going to wake up today and think about him 10 minutes. That's it. 
That's all I'm giving him today. He's not going to get my whole day. I'm not going to be upset all day. I'm not going to be thinking about this fake life I created in my head with him. I'm going to think about him 10 minutes today. And every day it got easier and easier and easier until prayer became part of my schedule. Worship became part of my daily schedule. And before I knew it, I forgot about him. Like before I knew it, of course, I didn't completely forget about him. But the pain left. The pain left. God dug those roots out. Every time I was snotting and crying and worshiping, that was it was out crying was healing for me. I was healing. God was healing me through my tears. He was healing me through my worship. And then when I got the gift of the Holy Ghost, it was hella serious after that. Like I was on. I was because the Holy Ghost will pray things that you don't know to pray with like in English. The Holy Ghost will pray things for you that you don't know how to pray. He'll do it for you. So imagine that you get healing, you walk in purpose and you got the Holy Spirit. And my discernment was already strong no matter what, um, no matter what state of mind I was in, no matter what season I was in in my life, my discernment was always strong. I, I would always sense when people were talking about me when I walked in the room. I would sense when people didn't like me. I would sense in conversations where I'm talking to a full-blown demon, let me get out of this conversation. Or I'm talking to a full-blown witch, let me not even interact. You know, like that's how strong my discernment was. But because I, I, I begged God for the Holy Spirit for six months. And God was like, it's nothing that you got to beg me for. I'm going to put my spirit when you're purified. I'm going to put my spirit in you when you're a pure vessel. You ain't pure right now. You watching porn still. I'm not putting my spirit in you. No. You know, it's demonic because so many women are experiencing the same situation. Exactly. 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 Let me tell you something. Satan tricks don't change. Satan tricks don't change. Get the visual out your mind that Satan is red with two horns. Satan look just Satan. Satan look like everything that you pray for. Satan look like everything you pray for. When I tell y'all, I said a prayer on 11th Street, Lake Charles before I met my my daughter's dad. That I'm no longer in a relationship. My prayer, I prayed for him down to the T, skin tone, height. Teeth, penis, job, everything. I pray for that down to the T. Do you know when I got that, I thought that was God? Let me tell y'all something. The enemy hears your prayers and he know exactly what to send because the enemy know more about what you like than what you know about you, uh, what you know that you like. The enemy knows. And that's exactly what he did. The prayers you should have been praying, if you're praying for a kingdom spouse, God, send me the man that you made for me. Send me the woman that you made for me. Send me somebody that's strong in the areas where I'm weak at. Send me somebody that I can make hell mad with. Send me somebody that to where I get up in the morning, we get up in the morning, we pray that the doors of hell are shaking. That's what you need to be worried about. God, the, the, some, sometimes, see, at a point in my life, I didn't trust God. That's why I sat there and said that stupid little prayer. Talking about I want him dark skin. I want him tall. I want him muscular. No, that's what my flesh wanted. But my husband now? That's what I needed. You understand? God gave me what I needed. And I'm so glad he didn't give me what Tremaine wanted. I'm so glad he didn't give me what I wanted. He gave me exactly what I needed. And now I don't, and now I understand why nothing worked out. I understand why the enemy took me through a roller coaster of soul ties. Because because of those soul ties, I'm sitting in front of you today. Because of those soul ties, instead of you being stuck for 10 years like I was stuck in, I can pull you out of it in 10 days. I can pull you out of it in 10 hours. I can pull it out of you in 10 months, 10 weeks. See, every time you go through something, God brings you through something. If you don't pull back and pull somebody, if you don't get in front of somebody and give them your testimony, how people going to be healed? How people going to be set free? How? How? How are they going to be set free and healed if you won't even open your mouth to tell your story? My ministry came through my misery and pain. And I wouldn't change a God darn thing about it. I wouldn't change nothing about it. Do you understand me? Not a thing. I wouldn't change a thing about it because God, let me tell y'all something. God is good. God did a whole 360 on my life. Let me tell you something. People wrote me off. People said, oh, she got three baby daddies. That's just who she is. Ultramane. Even when I was young, Ultramane, fast, Ultramane. People judged me, didn't even know I had a mother with mental illness, that I had to literally teach myself everything when my aunties wasn't around. People don't know the things that I went through. People don't understand. People don't understand. The things that I went through in my first marriage, people don't understand. People labeled me 
wrote me off. I put a, a post on Facebook today and I said, don't judge people off of their season of process. Don't put your limitations on what people can possibly be because of where you see them at now. If I would have listened to what people said about me back then, if I would listen to the fact that God can't use me because I have two kids out of wedlock, if I would listen to the fact that God ain't have no use for me, I'll listen to the church people because I have a nose ring and I have a couple of tattoos, I wouldn't even be sitting in front of y'all today. The, let me not seem the church people the religious people. They never will because God has so much purpose. Yes, God has purpose in me and I accept it. I accept it. A lot of those, God showed me a lot of those relationships I was in was number one because I got myself in it. But number two, whatever the, in, whatever the enemy set up for you as a trap, God going to make it your testimony. God going to make it your ministry. He flipped that thing over, split the block and said, you still got purpose. Get up. Within my last relationship, somebody I had disconnected from came back into my life. She's a prophet of God. She lives in Chicago. This girl called me out of the blue. She said, God told me to call you. I was at work. I said, well, why? Mind you, I didn't tell nobody we broke up. She said, if God said he did, He caused the breakup. God said he caused his heart to turn because you wasn't going to do it. You wasn't strong enough to do it. He, she said, but God did it. And God said, if he didn't do it, you was on a one-way ticket to hell. She said, if you would have died in your sleep tonight, you was going to go straight to hell. A man 30 struggling but one wanting to take my life because she always makes it. First of all, let me tell you something. That suicidal spirit is going around rapping and I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and I cover you in the blood of Jesus and I cover your mind in the blood of Jesus. Oh, God. Do not take your life over emotions. The Let me tell you something. The enemy is running rampant around rampant right now with suicide. Do you hear me? Do not allow your thoughts to dictate an action that you can't come back from. You still got purpose. God still loves you. You're not going to take your life. God got purpose in you. You're not going to take your life. And if you're surrounded with people that's bringing you to that point, you need to disconnect yourself immediately. Inbox me, please. You have to cover your mind every day. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I'm going to just be transparent with y'all. Since, Jan since November 1st, when I started getting into this ministry and started posting videos on YouTube and started to veer out to, to help women, right? I've had mind battles every day. Every day. Down to my mother being ill and kids father. Inbox me, girl. I have, have, have had mental battles every day. Some days, some days around the same time, I was just crying for no reason. I'm like, I'm at work crying for no reason. I'm like, why am I crying? Until my spouse pointed out, like, that's a spirit. You have to bind it and tell it to leave. You have to bind it and tell it to go. You can, let me tell you something. You have authority over yourself to tell depression got to go now in the name of Jesus. I cover my mind in the blood of Jesus. I bind any spirit that is not of God back to the pits of hell from which it came. I cover myself in the blood. Fear has no, fear you have to go. Depression, you have to go. Struggle, you have to go. Poverty, you have to go. Uncertainty, you have to go. Double mindedness, you can't stay here. And when you bind it out, replace it with a Bible verse. Fear, you gotta go. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but a power and a sound mind. When the enemy telling you that God can't use you, Jeremiah 29 11 says, God has plans for me to have a hope and a good future. When the enemy say, God not gonna do nothing for you, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, God gonna do exceedingly abundantly all that I can actually think. Because the enemy going to try you every day and it start right here. It start right here. Your mindset. If y'all don't do nothing else, pray over y'all mind. Pray over y'all thoughts. Replace y'all. Replace what y'all listening to. Replace your music with worship. Say, some, say a prayer in the morning. Cover yourself. Cover your children. Ask God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost is your helper. The Holy Ghost will help you. You got any mama support groups near me? No, I don't know none, but I, we can all start one if that's what y'all want to do. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Suicide is running rampant. Suicide is running rampant, and we have to pray against that. We have to pray against the spirit of suicide because the enemy knows that he does not have much time left. He knows that he does not have much time left, so he pulling out all the stops. Since January 1st, the enemy been... Hella busy. The enemy strategies don't change and they don't stop. But he know that when you know God, he know that when you open your mouth, he don't have much power after that. So if you tell him, 
to leave that he not welcome in his house when you tell him I'm a child of the most high and that I'm covered in the blood of Jesus and there's nothing that you can do to me and that I don't fear you. You, ha you have to get yourself in a place to where you got to encourage yourself when you ain't got me to look at on TikTok or YouTube or you ain't got your famous pastors and preachers to motivate you. You have to get in a position with God where you have relationship for yourself, where you know at least some scriptures for yourself. Do I know the whole Bible? Heck no. I don't know all the scriptures in the Bible, but I know the important ones I need to know to tell the enemy to flee. And ever since he told me that, hey, you need to bind that, I haven't had no problems. I'll catch myself and be like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Let me put some worship in my ear. Let me pray some worship in my, in my AirPods. Let me go ahead on and read a scripture or two. Let me tell God, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not rich, but thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't have everything I need, but thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you. I still got purpose. Thank you. I still got blood running through my veins. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm working on forgiving myself. And also, that's important. Forgive yourself as well. Because sometimes we tend to blame ourselves on why things happen. That's just human nature. I'm going to blame myself because I did something to cause this. God, some, sometimes God be causing it. Sometimes God loves you so much that he will close the door to a relationship for you. Sometimes God see way down the line further than we can. God knew that if I stayed in that relationship, that I was going to, I was going to lose my mind. I was going to, I had mental battles every day in that relationship. I was depressed in that relationship. God seen fit to say, Hey, you not strong enough to get out of it. So I'm going to turn his heart. Then I'm going to get you together in these 90 days. And then when he leave, you're not going to feel it. You go feel it, but you ain't going to feel it how you used to feel it back then when you had a breakup. Speak to yourself, use God word, and also get count. Yeah, therapy. I always advise therapy. And if you can't afford a therapist, you can you can uh, talk to your local pastor. You can talk to somebody in church that you can trust. Find your spiritual mother, spiritual father. Find you a mentor. I definitely believe in that therapy. Therapy, God, and healing and purpose. Oh, you good to go. And then I also added the I, uh, father prayer in here. I talked about all the different soul ties I was in and the purpose of uh of those soul ties, what the enemy purpose was for each of those soul ties that I have. Um, and I just want to tell y'all just my backstory to this. Now that you, when you go through all of that, when you repent, restore in scriptures, you worship, you pray, you forgive, you renounce, you throw everything away, you broken from the soul tie. Forgiveness don't happen overnight. Healing don't happen overnight. But I gave you the steps in the process. So now it's up to you to say, go back and say, oh, I remember when I used to talk to old boy. I remember when I, I used to talk to old girl in high school. That was my first. But I ain't seen her in years. But I be thinking from her, about her from time to time. Let me go ahead on and break this soul tie. I don't care if you need a whole journal to break every soul tie that you've never been with that ain't your husband. Because a lot of stuff that was holding up God from sending my husband was me connected. Y'all was in a 10-year soul tie. I talk about that in the book. I just got free from it last year. Do y'all hear me? Still was in relationships with other people, but had a soul tie from 2011 to 2021, right before I met my husband. 10 years, y'all. And God showed me because, number one, I allowed it. But y'all read about it in the ebook. book um, It's called Breaking Free from Soul Ties. It's in my bio, $9.97. I'm not trying to make a book. Y'all paying me for my oil. Y'all paying me for my experience. That's what y'all paying for. But y'all need to get free. If you don't need it, find a girlfriend that need it. Hey, sis, I, I understand you broke up with old boy, but we know that's not your husband. So go ahead on and run this Breaking a Soul Tie book. $9.97, the leak is in the bio. Yes, I'm promoting it. Because I paid for this oil. I, I paid for this anointing. I lost out on a lot for this. I lost a lot of friends down the road to be sitting in front of y'all today. I lost a lot. But let me tell you something. God, and I tell y'all, God replaces everything you lose with something better. Y'all. Y'all. You, you can't, your mind can't even fathom the things that God has for you after this. After this, after the healing, after the process, after the pruning, after the forgiveness, after the breakup, like God has so much more for you than this. You know, now that I'm here, almost two years later, outside of that soul tie, God then moved me to a new state for me to start purpose. I'm married. My kids are ha happy and healthy. I'm in a healthy, healthy space mentally. My relationship with God is growing daily. All my soul ties from my past are broken. You know, my prayer for you is my prayer and hope for y'all is to get free. That's my only prayer. 
the whole ebook is breaking down what you need and it's also me being transparent about what i was stuck in a 10 year soul time y'all that's hella crazy a 10 year soul time and i just 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 got out of it so i'm not preaching about nothing that i haven't experienced already so i hope this live. i hope y'all enjoyed this live um i hope you guys go get the book breaking the soul tie you can click the link in the bio or you can go to www.slaybible.net and after you know i tackle this soul tie stuff i'm gonna have a forgiveness series i'm gonna have a healing series i'm gonna have a relationship series i'm gonna do everything god tell me to do because i didn't waste it a decade not even walking in purpose is your book on youtube in your bio yeah i think you can click the the link tree and it'll drop it in there but y'all can just click the link here in tiktok bio click it and it's gonna take you to my link tree it's gonna say breaking a soul tie bloop check out it's 997 i stand on that price i don't have a promo code for that price i think that's an affordable price for the all that i paid for for the for the heart and so i put a lot into this book i was nights after work i was writing this book i was working on this book i was asking my friends hey how did it go i put my all into this book so you know and i just read y'all passages from it so i hope you guys go purchase it you know don't i don't i don't ask for cash apps or none of that if you want to sew into my ministry sew into the book because that's going to help you it's just an exchange that is going to that book is going to help you i wish i had somebody like me talk to me about soul ties you know i didn't learn about soul ties till i was 28 years old I learned about them at 28, but I didn't know how to get out of them until I was 33. I'm going to be 35 next month. I'm getting to I love it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Please pray for the oh, boy that I get free. You will get free. But this is the thing. You have to choose freedom. And me and everybody else on this live can pray for you. We all can pray for you. And guess what? I'm going to work on the audio because I'm, I'm uh, in the process of getting a book on Amazon. We can all on this live pray for you, Audi boy. But if you don't choose to be free, if you don't choose to not let those thoughts get to you, if you don't choose to bind them and rebuke them, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing that we can do for you. You have to do it. I can pray for you. I can cover you. But it's ultimately up to you to make a decision that I don't want to think like this. I need help. You need to get in your car and drive to the hospital. If you have absolutely nobody, you need to get in your car and drive to the emergency room. And they will admit you. They will do a psych on you and they will admit you. Are you still working a psych work? Do you think our enemy do you think our enemy would ever confess their sins committed against black women? Our enemy. Mindset is everything. I ask God every day, shift my mind. Shift my mind. Like, am I am I thinking like you want me to think? Am I thinking with a kingdom mindset or am I thinking with a flesh mindset? Am I thinking in my flesh or am I thinking in the spirit? Because guess what? As saved as I am. I still have thoughts. The enemy putting thoughts in any and everybody's mind. And it's up to you to use the tools and the strategy that God gave you in this good old book to get out of it. Everything you need to know is in the Bible. Everything you're going through, they got an antidote in the Bible. But if you don't have a Bible, I put some scriptures in the, uh, I put two pages of scriptures in the ebook. I put what scriptures go with what. I broke down everything like my ten year old my nine year old son can read this and understand it. That's how that's how I broke it down. I broke it down so so down to earth to where you can understand everything from this book and what you need to do and how you need to do it. Period. That's how you need to do it. You have you have to get free. You cannot walk in purpose until you get free. You ne you may not be soul tied sexually to somebody, but you might be soul tied to drugs. You might be soul tied to um, watching porn. You may be soul tied to food. You may be soul tied to a lot of things. You may have an idolatry issue where you serving things above, putting things above God. It's so many things. But this book is on relationships, sexual soul ties. This is what this is on because a lot of people struggle with this because a lot of people don't know that you can be soul tied to people that you sleep with. That's why God only created soul tied for marriage. But thank God he had grace on me. He had grace. The same grace God give me, he give you every day that you wake up. The same grace and same mercy that I got, you got too. But understand that don't take his grace lightly because you can just turn away from your wicked ways, okay? Just thank God for his grace and turn away from what you're doing. It's amazing how we go to the doctor to help heal our physical, but we never want healing for our mind. Yes, your mind need healing. 
Because those memories are going to be there. You think that the enemy going to allow you to forgive and not put in what you put in your put a thought in your mind about what they did to you? When I, when I, I was in the process of praying for my child father, I was like, God, I just want him to have an encounter with you, God. I want you to change him. I want you to cover him. I even cover him. I cover my kids' fathers. I even cover them. I even cover all of them. And the enemy put my, literally put in my mind the day he called me out my name. The enemy put in my mind. Put that in my mind while I was praying. Do you understand? The enemy is not like he's not letting up on nobody. So it's only right for us to be ten toes down for God for the kingdom. Because when God come back, I'm going back to the kingdom. Like I it I'm not going to hell for nobody. I'm not I'm forgiving everybody. Do you hear me? Everybody. Everybody, because I have a healthy fear for God. I'm forgiving everybody. You don't like me, I forgive you. You can't stand me, I forgive you. You you talked about me before I came in here, but hello, how you doing? I forgive you. Like you have to get to a place of maturity to where nothing phases you. Because long as let me tell you something, long as I'm right with God, I don't care what nobody say at all. Because ain't nobody but Him can put me in heaven or hell. So once you get to to that place to where you like, man, I better get it together and get out these disobedient streets. See, I just got these safe, safe streets. I've been saved all my life, but I just got these safe streets like two years straight. So it's been a journey for me. I'm still like a babe in Christ, but I'm going to definitely try to help people not make the same mistakes I made, you know? Like, I don't want y'all to be stuck in these soul ties and your soul spread all over and everybody that your partner didn't slip with, not all their spirits attached to you. And you wondering why you can't get free, your mind going crazy, you got anxiety, you depressed now, you angry now, you always hungry now, you want to watch porn. I'm telling y'all, them spirits are something serious. And we're not going to even get into the, the uh, succubus spirits. The spirits that have that are responsible for your wet, wet sex dreams. We're not going to even talk about that. I'm just going to ease that into another life. Because y'all not ready for that. But I love you guys so much. If not, I could not get on YouTube. I'm glad that I got on um, with my TikTok family. I'm so glad that you guys tuned in. If you want to sew into me, go to my link in my bio and buy the ebook. How to Break Soul Ties. It is a good old 28, 28 pages. I don't need to drag out an ebook long because everything that I went through and every step that I took is, is really like broken down to the T what I did. So get the ebook. You know, I didn't have no marketing strategy because I know that my gifts will make room for me. Um, I had asked God over and over again, well, how can I market this? How can I do this? Because I also help women in business. And I ain't never got no response because when you when you do something for God, he'll make provision for you anyway. So if y'all want the book, fine. If y'all don't, keep tuning in and getting free because that's my purpose. My purpose is to, first of all, you know, serve God, do his bidding, do his will, and also piss off the devil. That's my job. So I hope you guys have an amazing night. Anybody who purchased the ebook because I see my thing going off, I appreciate you guys. If y'all can send me like or go put a, a, a review on the page or send me a review, shoot me a text, shoot me a message, shoot me an email how you feel about the book. If you don't need the book, get it for a friend. One thing about me, I'm always getting my friends some stuff, you know, that they need. It's, it's cute to buy people necklaces and, you know, clothes and hats and stuff. But if I know that they need to get free from something, I'm going to get them a book. If I know they in business, I'm going to get them a business book. If you know you need to get free from soul ties, get the book. It's nine ninety seven. It's not going to break your pockets. And it's also going to help you. You know how you, we buy a lot of stuff that don't do nothing for us and don't help us? Why don't you get something that can help you for the future? Something that you can say, man, that nine ninety seven was was a hell of a deal because now I'm free and I can walk in purpose. And now God can use me and elevate me to where I need to be because now I'm free from soul ties. Now I'm open to receive my spouse. Now I'm open to receive the blessing he has for me. Now I'm open to walk in my calling because I'm not attached to Tom, Dick, and Harry no more. So just get the book, you know. So I love you guys. Tune in next week. I don't know what I'm going to do my live on, but I think it might be on healing. Because a lot of people need to be healed. So, um, you guys have an amazing night. I'm about to go watch how to get away with murder, I think. So, you guys have an amazing night. Oh, well, do y'all have questions before I go? Do y'all have any questions before I go? I'm on my daughter's phone, so I don't know how to work this iPhone. Amen. 
one message. Amen. Well, I guess we don't have no questions, you guys. I was in a relationship with a woman for 20 years, and my partner passed away. I believe she's in, in a relationship with 20 years with a woman, and then she passed away. Like, was that your spouse? Was that your wife? I'm going to wait for you to, like, write the rest of it because I really I really want to know what you're talking about. But everybody lift up a prayer for Odie Boy because he did get on here and say that he was thinking about, he was having suicidal thoughts. So we want to keep him lifted in prayer. Even if you don't have the, Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit, just say, you know, God help him. God protect him. God keep his mind. We bind all plot schemes and plans of the enemy against his mind, against what's coming against his mind. In Jesus' name, we cover him in the blood of Jesus. I love to share a journal with you, if I may. You can inbox me. Will I get my job tomorrow, woman of God? I don't know. I'm. I don't know. Like I'm not a psychic. <laughs> I may be a prophet, but I'm not a fortune teller, you know. If God didn't give me a specific word for you, I can't just do it. You know, that's not how it works. But I, I'm praying that you do get it. I'm praying that if it's in God's will for you to have that job, that you get it. And understand that if you don't get it, that God has something better for you. You know, closed doors are not always, like, for rejection. Some closed doors are for your protection. No, she wasn't my wife, my significant other. If you still connected, if you still soul tied to her, you probably definitely still soul tied, her, soul tied to her. You definitely need to get boop and break those spiritual cords, sever the cord, period. But I do hope you get the job, though. But I, I want you to, once you get in God, you need, to, you need to get to a place to where you have to be okay when some doors close. You have to be okay with not getting a job. You have to be okay with not making that certain amount of money you thought you was going to. You have to be okay with things and trust that God is going to give you better. And 